Hi there, I'm Thomas and welcome to Prussian Tsar. In today's episode we have a closer look at a forgotten autobiographical novel. After we had so much action the last few times, something will come for now. This is the first one of the forgotten book series I would like to do. Obviously some more will follow over the time and come out every once in a while. Let's have a look at the contents. As always. After this short introduction, we first have a look at the book Heeresbericht or translated Herr Command. That would be this one. And put into some context. Afterwards, we are about to take a look at the author and his life. And at the end, we will have a conclusion. As always. Basically, we will follow the questions. What does this book involve? Why was it forgotten and who wrote it? I have to admit, this is one of my all time favorites. The reason for that, we are about to examine this video. Moving on to the next part. The novel was written by Edith Köppen and published in 1930, so in the later stages of the Weimar Republic. From around 1928 on, 10 years after the war, there were numerous novels published by veterans. Reason for that was this huge success of remarks all quite on the Western Front. That would be that one. And Erich Jünger's Storm of Steel. That is that one. In Germany in 1930 alone there were 112 books published just to give an idea of the number we are dealing with. So we have to deal not only with the phenomenon, but a whole genre for itself too. That genre shows a highly diverse spectrum from pacifistic to war supporting, from realistic to nationalistic. This huge amount of published books is one reason why most of these novels nowadays have been forgotten. Basically there has been a lot of research about these war books and the genre. Only we will dive deeper into that after we have been looking at some more of these novels. It is only to be mentioned for now that this research is bound to the idea of cultural remembrance, media and literature. Now back to the novel. What is it about? In contrast to most books of this genre, which are from and about infantry, this one is from the view of a field terrorist. Well, most of the soldiers and casualties were to be found in the infantry. So we have something more special here. The story starts as early as 1914 and ends in 1918. That means we follow the protagonist during the entire war. Most of the story happens at the Western Front. Just a few episodes take place at the Eastern Front. While he starts as a trooper or cannoneer, he climbs up the ladder during the war to become a lieutenant in the later war. Since he is in the field artillery, we are able to find some parts that involve horses, riding and driving. The most interesting part in this book is a description of a cavalry attack in 1915 of the enemy and its utter failure. This novel combines fiction and reality on a very specific level. It is one of the first German college or mashup novels. The author added in his chapters various parts of newspapers, orders historic descriptions and so on. He does this to illustrate the brutal differences between these propagandistic reports and the view of the higher commands to the experiences of his figure and so in some way of his own. It also puts everything in a greater context and perspective. So the problem that we have in general with that war literature being between fiction, narrative and reality is here even more dense. Or, as Klein states, quote, generally war books were not looked on as literature but treated rather as documents, either on a universal level, which caused breadth of historical perspective, balance, totality, in short objectivity were expected and from lacking, or on a personal level, in which case they were weighed like the depositions of eyewitnesses in a trial and from wanting more often than not. End of quote. Now in 1933 
The book was burned along with others since it was seen as a pacifist <laughs> almost got it. Pacifist anti war novel which the Nazi party wanted to be pushed into oblivion. And so it was until 76 when it was published the first time again after 1932. From then on it was published every once in a while but never had a huge impact. In 2005 a Dutch translation of the title Frontberichten was released. The last publishing date of the English translation was in 1931, so it is something rare to find. So much for the book. Moving on to the author. Elif Köppen was born on the 1st of March 1893 in Genten, near Magdeburg, and died on the 21st of February 1939. His father was a physician and his mother a daughter of a wholesaler. He went to a grammar school in Potsdam. Afterwards he studied in Kiel and Munich German philology, philosophy, history of art and history of literature from 1912 to 1914. When war broke out in 1914 he volunteered in August of that same year at the 40th Field Artillery Regiment. There he got his military basic training. In October 1914 he came to the 1st Zerogate Department, Ersatzerteilung, of the 40th Field Artillery Regiment on the Western Front, probably near Arras. He took part at the Battle of Loreto and the battles and fights close to Suchy and Los. He had to attend the military hospital twice. In 1916 he took part at the Battle of the Somme, where he got a lung contusion. This injury should be a huge reason for his death about 20 years later. After this injury he had to go for two months into the military hospital in Genrode. At the end of 1916 the regiment was relocated to the Eastern Front in Russia. In spring 1918 back to the Western Front. Edel Köppen experienced the end of the war in a mental hospital near Mainz. After he started openly to disobey his orders in September 1918 to solve his ambivalence between doing his duty and the immorality of war. In December 1918 he was dismissed from the army as a lieutenant of the reserve and bearer of the Iron Cross first class. In total he has seen a lot of the war and experienced all the nuances of it. Due to the turmoil of war he did not have to take on the consequences of his actions and he was released from the mental hospital. After the war was over he had health issues which led first the change in work experiences in the literary scene. In 1919 he continued his studies in German philology in Munich without ending it properly, although he wrote a dissertation about journals of the Romantic period, which was almost finished. He had financial issues, so he was not able to publish it. In 1920 he started a career at a publisher, which was called Gustav Kippenhauer Verlag in Potsdam. He married in 1921 Hedwig Witt. At this publisher he was a leading head for the cultural journal Die Dichtung or the Poetry. Due to health issues he had to leave the publisher on the 1st of May 1922 after staying in two lung sanatoria. In October 1922 he started to work at another publisher, Trovich und Sohn in Berlin, but had to leave soon due to his health issues. In May 19 23, Kappen then founded his own publisher called Hadan Verlag. Specialized in modern literature, graphics, topographical sample printing and illustrated individual issues. Only a few issues were published and closed down in the following year. His daughter was born in June 1924 and the financial struggle of the family should end in 1925 when even almost Edelf Köppen was called into the literary advisory board of the Funkstunde, the first German radio station ever in Berlin. Achtung, Achtung! Hier ist die Sendestelle Berlin im Boxhaus. Auf Welle 400 Meter. Meine Damen und Herren, wir machen Ihnen davon Mitteilung, dass am heutigen Tage der Unterhaltungsrundfunkdienst mit Verbreitung von Musikvorführungen auf drahtlos telefonischem Wege beginnt. Die Benutzung ist genehmigungspflichtig. 
Als erste Nummer bringen wir Cello Solo mit Klavierbegleitung. Andantino von Kreisler. Gespielt von Herrn Kapellmeister Otto Urak. Am Flügel Herr Fritz Goldschmidt. He was part of the art program of the literary department, which he previously worked as a freelancer for. In 1929, he became head of the department, which he really loved, as he stated, quote, finally there came a job along which had more opportunities than handler services. In it, I live now, I love it, so the work can begin, end of quote. He had new ideas about different formats in the radio, in which he also was a director and contributing. Kappen became an important link between the literary sector in Berlin and the new medium of the radio. He shaped the first steps with his literary approach, especially with his radio plays. Because of his pacifist and left liberal engagement as a writer, presenter and responsible of the literary section of the radio, he was set on leave in April 1933. In the end of June 1933 he was fired due to the new laws made by the Nazi government. Now reasons for this action was his book Higher Command, which was published in 1930, his participation at the League for Human Rights and Radio Contributions, almost got it. Radio Contributions, like the pacifistic radio play We Stood Before Verdun or We Standen for Verdun, which was done in February 1931 to remember the 15th anniversary of the Verdun Offensive. He made an objection, but it was rejected in September 1933. From then on, it was forbidden for Köppen to publish anything. Thus, he started in a small movie company in PR. Two years later, he became chief dramaturg at the Tobis Europe Film AG and worked on scripts for screenplays and entertaining films. After Tobis became part of the propagandistic ministry, he got under pressure, since he refused to join the Nazi party and to take pro-Nazi and anti-Semitic films into the program. So he was not a party member, his books were on the index and he lived in a state of an immer immigration, but he was until his death a member of the Reichschriftkammer or the Imperial Chamber of Commerce. He had a responsible position at the movie production and had to work together with movie stars who collaborated with the Nazi regime. Köppen had the idea to write a book about the Nazi state and started co close enough and started to collect material for it since 1933, but he was not able to finish it. He died on the 29th February 1939 in Gießen from lung and laryngeal tuberculosis. A look back to the book. He wrote it while working at the radio station. Already during the war, he had the idea to write a novel about his experiences of war. So he asked his landlord, a senior civil servant at the Army Archive in Potsdam, to look for some documents he could use for his novel. Pieces and notes from newspapers were collected of Edith Cotton's mother, especially those contrary to the experiences he made at the front lines. Around 10,000 copies of his novel were published, which is a pretty low number compared to remarks all quite on the Western Front with about 3.5 million copies and Rens with 150,000. Nonetheless, the novel had great attention among connoisseurs, like Kurt Tucholsky. For them, it made a great impact and was called the bravest novel that has been written about the war. Next to the Casas Scully by Plivier. In the Feuilleton, it was written that, quote, although it does not want to be poetry, but only a report, it nevertheless appears to be poetry, end of quote. And here we are again at the problem in between fiction, narrative and reality, because of this play with fiction and reality it counteracts fundamentally almost got it. It counteracts fundamentally the manipulation of the public awareness, or eology and reality. Since this novel has a high degree of authenticity, it has an intense impact on the reader. Or as Adolf Köppen himself stated on the book Flap on the first issue, quote, I was born on the first of March eighteen ninety three. 
So I was able to enlist as a volunteer in August 1914 and did my service from October 14 until October 18 in the Supreme Mandate as Gunner, Private, Non-Commissioned Officer, Vice Sergeant, Deputy Officer, Lieutenant in Reserve in the West and East. I did, I did it with enthusiasm, with a sense of duty, with clenched teeth, with despair, until I got the Iron Cross first class and was put into the mental hospital. End of quote. The style of his novel is objectively detached and took count into the new objectivity and was for the time a very modern approach to telling a story. In contrast to most of the other novels, who still were caught in the traditional style of the 19th century, like Who Quite on the Western Front by Remark. In total, this novel has a big creative power, is a call to the conscience, and a plea to pacifism. The First World War was Elif Köppen's outstanding theme, which he accentuated and articulated differently in different creative phases. Now at the conclusion, what is to say? Well, the novel is unmatched, unsurpassed at the most formally advanced war novel, supported by its own mixture of cool detachment and passionate commitment. The author, Elif Köppen, has seen everything from the war from 1914 on until 1918 on the West and East. So that novel is pretty specific. What is really special about it is that it shows the war from the perspective of an artilleryman, in contrast to most of the books being written by infantrymen. The shells are getting a face, to put it into words, instead of just anonymously flying around and killing people, as they do in most war novels. It was published in 1930, when a whole wave of other war novels were published. So it was in a pretty strong competitive environment. Additionally, it was published too close to the book burnings by the Nazis, three years later. So it did not really have a chance. Another point is the early death of Erdlef Köppen already in 1939, which made it even more difficult for the book. Nonetheless, it was published later again in the second half of the 20th century so it obviously was rediscovered. I have to admit that this one is one of my absolute favorites. About the author Edlef Köppen is to say that, unfortunately, the Nazi party almost had success, close enough, almost had success to push him into oblivion. His work in the radio is forgotten, as is his radio play We Stood Before Verdun, of which only fragments exist. So one reason for this video is to do something for the remembrance. If you have the chance to lay hands on a copy, get it and read it. It is highly recommended. In the future, we will look every once in a while at different novels. Famous ones, forgotten ones, good and bad, to get a more comprehensive idea of the genre of literature. What do you think? Do you know the books? Do you know different ones? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. More links are below in the description. And see you next time.